Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I believe uh, Mr. Rice brought up the Washington Post a moment ago. I just would like to say there's an article up that says GOP bill projected to hike taxes for many in the working class. Um, so uh, I think we are having a very important conversation today. Um, it seems like the authors of this legislation actively decided to target the most vulnerable among us when they were searching for ways to pay for their corporate giveaways. They targeted those without a loud voice in Washington, D.C., adopted children, teachers, victims of long-term illnesses, young people trying to get a piece of the American dream struggling under the crippling burden of student debt. Now we know why Republicans have hidden this bill from the public for so long, because tax reform is hard. And it's even harder when you go it alone, cooking up things in back rooms, out of the light of day, instead of bringing Democrats and the public into the process to have this tough conversation together. Not as partisans, but as Americans. Republicans have made the most cynical trade-offs, only hurting people who need the help the most. This is wrong. Tax reform should be about coming together and making choices that reflect our consciences and our values, the values of the people that we represent. And I can tell you not a single working mother working two jobs to put food on the table, not a teacher, not a family caring for an aging parent has ever told me that what tax reform means to them is corporate cuts. They know those have never trickled down to them like Republicans have promised, like they promised in Kansas. My constituents know there's nothing left but fumes by the time the trickle reaches their doorstep. And those fumes don't help them pay for medical expenses, college tuition, housing, or even the basic necessities that the people who wrote this plan clearly take for granted. My constituents have been reaching out to my office terrified about what this disastrous bill is gonna mean for them. And I can tell you they know better than the idea that somehow a bigger standard deduction will be the answer to everything. The Republican standard deduction is not an answer to a teacher buying school supplies, paying for a mortgage, and trying to put her kids through college while paying for her husband's expensive cancer treatments. It's not an answer to seniors on fixed incomes trying to pay for long-term care. It's not an answer to a young family just starting out and trying to buy their first home while covering the exorbitant cost of childcare. The math simply doesn't add up. If you have to pay $90,000 a year for long-term care due to Alzheimer's, what good is $12,000 standard deduction? If you're working hard to pay both a mortgage and student loans and made financial decisions expecting to be able to deduct those interest payments, what good is a $12,000 standard deduction when you can deduct more today? My friends on the other side of the aisle can't answer these questions and they've not answered the cries of the people in this country people who are just looking for a little fairness and relief. Instead, they bow to special interests and political expediency yet again, reflecting the very worst of Washington, D.C. to the citizens who sent us here to represent them and to look out for their best interests. The Supreme Court Justice Oliver Wendell Holmes, Jr. once said, quote, taxes are what we pay for civilized society, end quote. The purpose of the tax code is not to award political friends and sticking it to blue state voters who pay higher state and local taxes. Rather, it's to fund a functioning government and support an environment where every middle class family can succeed to fund a civilized society. This bill undercuts the very notion of a civilized society. It's morally bankrupt and an outright attack on the middle class built on a foundation of lies and mischaracterizations. It is fiscally irresponsible, raising the deficit by trillions and putting it on the back of our children and our grandchildren, a short-term sugar rush at the cost of long-term economic stability. I will not accept this, and based on what I'm hearing from my constituents, the American people will not accept it either. Thank you, and I yield back. Mr. Holding.